Rice farmers across the rice growing regions in Guyana are becoming more equipped and knowledgeable of the new techniques in rice cultivation. This is all possible through Farmers Field School. I am Carl Gurusami and you're watching this week's edition of the Science of Rice. In 2003, Farmers Field School was formally introduced to rice farmers and as the years progressed, the country as a whole has seen the positive changes in the rice industry. Let's find out more about the Farmer's Field School. Farmer Field School is a, is a group-based learning process, meaning that farmers are being trained or, or the learning environment is more of, of in a group methodology. It's commonly called the school without walls. As we know, a school is a venue for training and learning, and a conventional school has walls. In this case, the field is being used as a venue for training, and that's why we say, and the field has no boundary and no walls, that's why we, we commonly call the, or refer to the farmer field school as a school without walls. It's, it's a participatory method of, of learning. It's adult education and learning through experimentation and observation. Farmers would generally, it, it provides the forum for farmers to share their knowledge share their experiences, and share their ideas. The field school is a more practical approach in educating farmers, and not just a lecture session. First of all, it lasts for the entire season, meaning that if the crop lasts for, for five weeks or six weeks, therefore the farmer field school would last for that period. In the case of rice, Rice lasts for approximately four weeks, and therefore the sessions will will um, <coughs> undertake or, or sessions will last for that period as well. At a given session, at a given session, farmers will will come to the plot, and by the way, these plots are demonstration plots where a technology is being demonstrated and you also have comparison plots where the farmer would have, would have been conducting his own practices. At the beginning of the season when the, this school is being planned the farmers will decide on what day the school will be held and also what time of the day the school will be held. So. At the beginning, so say for example in December when the crop starts, the farmers, they will assemble somewhere and they decide, well, Monday, we will have the session on a Monday at 9.30 a.m. So every week, for 14 weeks, the farmer will assemble at that plot on Monday at 9.30 a.m. And what they will do when they got there is to go into the plot, collect data, and having collected the data, they will go to a shaded portion of the field, probably under a tree, and one farmer will present the data. Based on what they would have found, after an anal analyzing the data, they will make a, their decision or, as to what to do with regards to the management of the plot. So it's a collective decision-making process. 
it's not the farmer alone who is, is making the decision. He's being assisted by other farmers who are part of, of the grouping. And that's the difference between a farmer field school and a regular training, training session. Here, the farmer basically does everything. The extension officer who is present is more of a facilitator. He facilitates the discussion. So at the end, you will want to, you want to decide as to what changes can be made or what adjustment can be made to the plot in terms of its management. For example, you might want to, the farm might advise to, to reduce the water level or to apply fertilizer you know, at, a, at a certain time or there's a need for, for weed control or there's a need for pest control. Like I said, these, this is, these decisions are taken collectively and you know, other farmers would have had influence in that final decision. Also, and that is what we call agroecosystem analysis, where you look at, look at the plant and its environment. So it, the plant is being grown and it's being grown in an environment. So you, 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 you're looking at the interaction or the interplay between the plant and its environment. And therefore, when you collect the data, that, that should give you a good idea as to what is taking place. And uh, you, wa you want to examine that very, very closely. And it comes back to the whole purpose of the field school. And the definition is to, to use agroecosystem analysis as a basis for action. When farmers are together, it's an opportunity for them to share their knowledge and experiences. This aid in assisting other farmers with some of their concerns. The agroecosystem analysis is one way that encourages farmers to speak out. Here is a demonstration showing how the agroecosystem analysis is carried out. And this is where we do the insect pest analysis. Um, this basically is by using the sweep net and um, <coughs> the sweep net is where um, this helps us to get, get the, like the amount of pests in, in the field or give us an, um, a fair idea like as to what press is present in the field. So um, <coughs> Mr. Ramsaran, the extension officer, he will be doing the um, the 50 sweep. Now the reason why we do the 50 sweep that will cast our threshold will tell us the threshold of paddy bog. Mainly we, we, we look, we target the paddy bog um, because of the past season and, and with this season with the amount. But it also helps us to um, <coughs> see what other pests is present in the field. Now <coughs> the, the 50 sweep, once, once you get over 25 bug in the 50 sweep, we advise farmer to do a, a spray, a preventative spray. And if it's below, well, it depends on how much below, because um, some farmers, I would say, would see, go in the field and see two paddy bug or see three paddy bug and they, do, they go and do a spray, which is not right. So this, this method and, and this part, this helps to assess the amount of pests. And by doing this, the extension officer can able to tell the farmer, well, you can go and spray or you can hold and monitor until. So you'll have Mr. Ramsaran doing the 50 sweep. After sweeping the rice field, the findings are counted. This is how many insects were caught in the net. The farmer is more able to determine his infestation level and the appropriate control method. Thank you.
<laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so after the fifth, this is that, that would have been the fifth sweep. Now, based on what we have observed, is only one party bug for the fifth sweep. So we wouldn't advise this farmer. But what we'd advise him to do: continue monitoring since the plot, the plot is in a, a hard dough stage which party bug can still cause damage at this point of time and meanwhile we do have some some green as well so at this time we will advise the farmer to still continue monitoring check the, the field every morning every afternoon for pests the next step is to examine the plant density this will give the farmer an average of how much yield he can expect from his crop this is the the quadrant Right, this this helped um, this piece of equipment help us to assess the population. It will help us with plant density, tell us just an average of plant present in the field, and um, it also help us to to give give an assessment of panicle. So by using this here, this will help to tell, give you an average of yield and um, the plant the, the plants for in the field mm. then you can help the corner wrong sir you check panic right <laughs> Um, this part here now, this is where you do um, the panicle count per foot square. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen plus fifteen. Sorry, this also is part of our data collection report. Um, like I said, this will help to assess your um, yield, and as well, it will tell you like the plant in all the stages. It will tell you plant the amount of plant that will be present. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a fair idea as for tillering and so later on. The rice plant is now examined. This exercise will help the farmer note the changes in his crop. For example, how fast the crop is maturing. This part of the data collection, this is where we, um, it's an ongoing thing for an every week. It's an every week process where we compare with the farmer normal practice and the six improved practice as to see what difference the plant would have made from the past week to now and compare it with the farmer one with, with the, the six improved practice. So, so, the reason we, we measure the plant, we take the, the leaf length of the plant, we take the root length of the plant. So it can able to show us what is the development from, from the last week to now. So this is, this is where we do the plant height and um, root length and leaf length. Good. Hundred and six centimeter. Plant height. Plant height. One and six? Yeah. Twenty two centimeter root length. Or the four centimeter leaf length. These simple steps we have just seen is how the agroecosystem analysis is carried out. 
This is the exact way it is done in the demonstration plots of the farmer's field school. After the data is collected, the findings are presented to a group of farmers and open for discussion. Let's now visit a farmer's field school held in Blackbush Polder. Now we can find the root length and the root color. So we can pull the next one. Twenty. 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 Whoa. Yeah, more. Too much, too much. The findings what we get from the field, we're gonna um, put it on the flip chart. So the first thing what we're gonna do, we gonna ask this farmer to draw the rice plant. That's right. Draw a healthy rice plant. Draw no sticky plant. <laughs> 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 Yeah. But now what we gonna do we gonna yeah. label the plant, the plant height. So the plant height we just measure from yeah. the base of the root to the tallest. This like leaf. Uh, so this here will be the plant height. I left space for writing all the data side. Uh one of the farmer who went in, what was the plant height you get? 77 77 cm. Okay. So we did two and we divided, add it and divide to get the average. So 72 centimeters. Good. The root length now. The root length now. Good. Um, the weed. For this, this what we do here is plant per foot square. Good. So we find we have some dock wheel, dock wheel so bush and what is it? You can leave it. I'm at the care of We can hear. Now, now what we can do now, we can draw the male, the tree, and the surrounding, and the two body, and we can draw the sun, and the cloud, you draw the sun color, right? Draw the sun color, right? Draw the sun color, right? Draw the now that the findings are noted, the farmer of the demonstration plot shares his information on the practices he used from the time of sowing to where it is today. Information such as seed rate, time sown, variety used, application of fertilizer, seed treatment, and more. Now we get this here, what you do? This is the farmer, uh, farmer alley practices we do. And now we can ask any farmer if you think you should do anything different or you could add anything. First thing what we what we looking at time of planting is so 14th of June. What do you think of that, Mr. Andrew? It's a little too early. A uh, little too late. Too late? Yeah. When you think you should at when was the best time? The, like between the from the first to the the tenth should be normal time. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think? 
Yeah. Any farmer? Joe? Correct time. Right. Correct time. Correct time. Yeah. What about you, buddy? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. that should be good time. Good time? Yeah. All right, then good. Well, Mr. Ledra, everybody against you. <laughs> this everybody says it's a good time. Um, the recommended time, though, for this crop is May and June. Yeah. So once you sow within. within this period of time, I think there is a good time because That's right. reason why during flowering season, two weeks before flowering, you need good sunlight. Two weeks after flowering, you need good, good sunlight. The more sunlight you get, you can better for the plant because plants are manufactured food in the presence of sunlight. So more sunlight, more food. Then the next thing you can go at seed rate. Oh, you asked the next. What about that, um, Romy? 120 pounds. Yeah, 120 pounds. That's good. Good seed rate? Yeah. We got a young farmer there, back. Myra? Yes. Yeah, what do you think about this? 120 pounds seed rate. Yeah. Well, the seed rate is too high, but all it is the kind of seed rate. Clean seed on the Okay. Any more suggestions from any farmer? Any farmer? Sarup? Yeah, things are too high. Too high? You get too much of seed, you put too much of seed in your, your field, and the, the, the field get you know, no plant, you tend to lodge when you need harvest in there. When the rice grows more thin, you get a bit more tillering and you get a healthier bearing once the plant sucker more. Excellent. Good, very good point. So we got, we get your tiller more, your biasi more. Yeah. We Insect. also hear you get less disease. Quick for yeah. time yeah. Right? yeah, easier to harvest. You know, they feel it dry out. More space, uh, more no, chicken. You know, get larging, yeah. right? The plant not large so easily because it, once it gets more space, it grows more strong and more, more stiff. Strong, yeah. And, yeah. and obviously, you never large so easily. Excellent. Go ahead. The discussion continues for the entire morning and a wealth of knowledge is gained and hopefully will be practiced by these farmers in their own field. Farmer field school con consists of three components. The agroecosystem analysis, which we commonly call AESA, that's one part. The other part is, is a special topic where it depends, depends on the stage of growth of the crop. A, top, that a topic is being discussed. So if the plant is in the vegetative stage or in the tillering stage, that tillering will be discussed with the farmers, like what causes tillering, how many, of t how many tillers is, is expected uh, from a plant, you know, when is the best time to apply fertilizer for tilling to take place and so. So normally this special topic is being done by a resource person other than the extension officer and uh, that can be done by personnel from research or any other invited guests or so. And the third component is the group dynamics where it's basically, you know, people sharing, you know, the jokes probably just uh, want to, you know, uh, or bring so add some brain teaser or whatever, but that's, it, it all contribute to the to the informal setting that a field school would want to um, want to have, so field schools are generally simple, and we we continue to analyze what is taking place in the field. The farmers continue to analyze what is taking place in the field over that period, over the period of 14 weeks. They will actually see um, how the crops develop or the crop develops, and uh, at the end of the season, then they will make a final analysis of how this crop would have performed in relation to what, what they set out to do in the first place. Because these demonstrations, uh, they always have a purpose. Farmers' field schools are carried out throughout the rice growing regions in Guyana. Each year, about 70 sessions are held by the Extension Department of the Guyana Rice Development Board. At the end of every crop, the Farmers Field School concludes too. It concludes with another session called Farmers Field Day. Farmers Field Day brings together farmers from all the major rice growing regions. The same agroecosystem analysis is carried out at the venue chosen. Field School sessions cul culminate into field days where, where farmers from all parts on of the country or the regions are invited to also assess the technology that has that was 
demonstrated. So at the field school session, you have a group of farmers, maybe 20 to 25 farmers, assessing the technology and, and making decisions on crop management practices. And in the field days, which comes at the end of the season, you have about 200 farmers examining the, and assessing the technologies as well. The difference between the field school and the field days is that the field school, the farmers are there throughout the, the growing season of the crop, which is about uh, 110, 115 days. And in the field days, they come just one day at the end of the season. Farmers Field School is a farmer to farmer approach that has been a success since its implementation in 2003. The goal of the field schools is to ensure farmers achieve the maximum yields from their crop without putting a strain on them financially. That's all for this week's program of the Science of Rice. I'm Carl Gurusami, thanking you for watching and inviting me into your homes or wherever you are watching. Do enjoy the rest of your evening and days ahead.